Spoilers for Commander Masters begin next week on July 11th, and for a set with this much hype and extremely high prices for sealed products, there are definitely high expectations from the community, which is easy to understand. But, what types of reprints are they going to give us beyond what's already been announced to justify the product price point? Let's jump into the video and talk about 5 cards I'd love to see reprinted in Commander Masters. <laughs> And first off, just want to thank you guys so much for checking out the video. I really do appreciate it. If you do enjoy the content here, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon if you want to stay notified for all up-to-dates whenever a new video is posted. But as I mentioned in the intro today, we are discussing Commander Masters. And this set actually releases in early August, but the spoiler season for it starts next week. And I am definitely excited about it because if you guys remember last year around this time, we got Double Masters 2022, which I think was a cool set with a lot of good reprints it was a little pricey and it had the collector boxes with the 60 ish dollar collector boosters uh which is something that commander masters is doing again and i think i might do a product breakdown a little bit later in the week of this set as a whole in terms of what the offerings are and what the price points are but today we really just want to talk about the reprints so off the bat we do know jeweled lotus is getting a reprint which is huge it's got a beautiful alternate art borderless variant whatever you want to call it and then of course just a regular and a foil etched as well as the Ur Dragon is getting reprinted. So two big hitter reprints right off the bat. Um, and they also made some other announcements like Personal Tutor, which is a good reprint of a card that's basically a slightly less good Mystical Tutor, but still useful, um, along with a couple of other cards from Portal 3 Kingdoms that were really just kind of expensive because of scarcity. Uh, so we'll see what happens with their prices overall. Now, moving forward, there are a lot of cards that players would like to see reprinted. Obviously, there are a lot of cards that are expensive in Commander in general, um, especially, you know, older stuff with everything being legal. And, you know, you have cards like Mana Crypt that I definitely think are really good and would be good reprints, but I wanted to go a little bit outside the box here. I don't know whether or not they're going to give us Mana Crypt again, as it was previously last in, I believe, Double Masters, which was in 2020. It's possible we could get it here. I thought maybe we'd get it in Dominaria Remastered alongside Force of Will, because they typically seem to like to reprint those in tandem. But I digress. That's not one we're going to cover today. But let's actually start breaking these down, starting with number five. All right, first up on the list, we've got the Medallions. Now, there have been people who have discussed this one before, so I will con you know, confess it is not necessarily an original thought. However, it's one I'm definitely co-signing on. There are five Medallions, one for each color, and they are simply two-drop artifacts that say X spells cost one less to cast. Now, as of the making of this video, all of the Medallions range from about... 15 to 30 dollars depending on which ones emerald medallion definitely falls on the lower end around 15 and then after you get to sapphire medallion they go up from there with jet medallion being the most expensive probably because black has a lot of spells that are either really low cost like one in a black or two in a black and just the accessibility factor of that color definitely makes it an appealing option these are really good cards for commander and i would think that they'd be likely to see more play were they a bit more accessible uh they've been reprinted only a couple of times once in a secret lair which you know from accessibility standpoint once that's out of print you really don't have another way to get your hands on them and then of course they were in tempest as well as the 2014 commander decks and the commander anthology for a couple of them so they've been scattered about but they've never really had a wide scale widespread reprint from accessibility and i definitely think it would do a lot for all of these to get those reprints plus they don't have any foil variants as far as i'm aware which means you could give them some fancy blinged out variants and that would be you know another selling point for the set moving on to number four i've got a couple of cards here which i guess is technically cheating but sue me parallel lives doubling season and anointed procession i grouped all of these together because they all have very similar effects and they are all very pricey for what they are uh, they're basically token doublers, or in the case of Doubling Season, they actually double counters as well. Uh, there's no doubt that Doubling Season is the best of these cards, but I do think all of them are pretty solid. And I'd like to see at least one of them get a reprint here. Uh, Double Masters 1, or the original, had Doubling Season in it. Um, and we've seen Anointed Procession get reprinted in the list. But we haven't really seen these cards be m super accessible since when they actually came out. Uh, Doubling Season's upwards of $80 at the cheapest per copy. Uh, Anointed Procession Parallel Lives are both closer to $40, $45. But they're definitely not super accessible. And they are definitely cards that are very popular in Commander, especially in token-based strategies. 
I think, again, you have the option to make, like, a borderless version of Parallel Lives, Anointed Procession. You know, Wizards loves to have these different variants, and obviously Doubling Season does have a variant already, but for a card like that that's just so limited in the amount of times it's been printed, I definitely think it would be extremely, extremely welcomed by players and be a good selling point for the product. Number three is Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. This card has actually only been printed once, and it was in Theros, which means it's been quite a little bit since it's been out. It was on the list for whatever that's worth, but it's hard to really count a list reprint as an official reprint because not only are list cards hard to get, but there's so many of them, and there's no real way to like chase them down. Uh, so it's not going to have any significant impact on the value. Uh, this is another really good card that's just you know an option for many commander strategies, and it's about thirty at the cheapest right now for the Theros version. I would really like to see this get a reprint in here. It's a, just a solid, solid land that would benefit significantly from a more accessible reprint. And again, you have the ability to bling that out, make some, you know, special variants of stuff or whatever you want to do. So it should work out for everybody on that front. Number two is actually a bit of a wild card, or a wild horse, I suppose. Uh, Riding the Dilu Horse. This is actually from Portal 3 Kingdoms. It is not reserve list. It just has not been printed in quite a long time. It is over $200 at the time of this filming. And there are other cards from Portal 3 Kingdoms that are being reprinted in this set, so it's not necessarily out of the realm of possibility. This is two and a green sorcery. It says target creature gains plus two, plus two, and horsemanship. Now, Horsemanship has only really been utilized a couple of times. It was basically just in Portal 3 Kingdoms, and then in the March of the Machine Commander decks, they actually gave us Herald of Hoofbeats, which is a knight that gives all of your knights horsemanship. So it's clearly a mechanic that still exists, but obviously um, it's you know a bit more challenging to design around because it's you know creates very specific kind of blockers. But this card is really cool, and it's worded in a weird way because it does gain horsemanship permanently. Um, so maybe a reprinted version of this would give a bit more clarification to the rules text but it's kind of a cool card and it's very very expensive just due to scarcity so i'd love to see them put this and some of the other horsemanship cards in here as well whether or not that'll happen i guess we'll have to wait and see but and considering they're already commander legal i don't think making them more accessible is going to be a real problem for anyone and finally, for number one, this one should be pretty obvious if you guys have followed the channel for a bit and listened to me talk about some of these things, but in general, I'd like to think this is probably a widespread community wish at this point. That is the Ally Fetchland. So, Windswept Heath, Polluted Delta, Wooded Foothills, Bloodstained Mire, and Flooded Strand. Now, the enemy fetch lands have been reprinted multiple times. They were in Modern Masters 2017, they were in Modern Horizons 2, they got a secret lair, and they were in the Zendikar Rising Expedition's expansion. Since then, we have only gotten basically one of the reprints for these allied fetch lands, and that was in the Zendikar Rising Expeditions, but those were only available as box toppers or very scarcely in collector boosters, so they were not accessible, really, from a widespread perspective. And the fetch lands are arguably some of the best cards in Commander and the game in general um, that just have not, you know, been equally distributed, if you will, uh, in terms of the amount of reprints that the enemy fetches have gotten versus the allied, as these were last widespread in Cons of Tarkir, which is a pretty far back set at this point. Um, all five of these are about $40 each. That can vary a tad, so it's just more of an average ballpark number that I'm using, but they are not cheap, and they are basically double the price of most of the enemy fetch lands because of how often those have been reprinted. I think this would do a lot to help the casual player get more accessible versions of the fetch lands and just in general like being a big marketable thing for Commander Masters on top of stuff they already have because you could make special treatments of these and have, you know, your retro frames or your extended arts, whatever you want to do, um, you know, to, to make these a little bit more appealing. But I think just putting the fetches in here alone would be a huge plus for this product and i definitely am really really hoping that they do end up going in that direction so that is my top five cards i want to see reprinted in commander masters yes it's technically more than five but i think i categorize them together you get it i hope if you guys agree with these choices let me know in the comments down below what you think and which ones you really want to see most or which cards maybe i didn't mention that you think are deserving of reprints obviously there are some cards i'd like to see the prices come down on but from an accessibility standpoint i think these are definitely some of the best so we will have to see whether or not wizards uh, agrees with me or there is anything that might come of it thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you in the next video peace